this is an introduction to the vespa theories this is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theories everyone dipendu here and welcome to this video If I ask you to draw the Lewis structure of methane or water molecule, you will easily be able to do it, right? Like this. This is the structure of methane, and this is the structure of water molecule. But have you ever imagined how would they look like in three dimensions? This is where the Vespa theory comes in. It helps us. identifying the structure of a molecule in three dimensions but first let's look at the postulates of vespa theory number 1 it says the shape of a molecule depends upon the number of valence shell electrons around the center atom number 2 the valence shell electron pairs tends to occupy such positions in space that minimizes the repulsion between them number 3 geometry of two molecules can be same but their structure will be different due to the presence of lone pairs and bond pairs number 4 a multiple bond is treated as a single electron pair you can pause the video and look at these points whenever you want for the first point we can take carbon dioxide and water as examples in carbon dioxide the central atom is carbon and it has four valence shell electrons but in water molecule the central atom is oxygen and it has six valence shell electrons but as you can see in carbon dioxide molecule the valence shell electrons in carbon are bonded with oxygen and thus they are called bond pairs and no electron is available that is why it has zero lone pairs and two bond pairs but in oxygen it has two electrons bonded with other two hydrogen atoms but two pairs of electrons are available that is why it has two lone pairs and two bond pairs for the second point it says valence shell electron pair tends to occupy such positions in space that minimizes the repulsion between them as an example we can see in carbon dioxide molecule the valence shell electron pairs keeps at a linear distance of 116.3 picometer which minimizes the repulsion between the valence shell electron pairs i hope the idea is clear let's look at third point now although having same geometry two molecules can have different shapes due to lone pairs and bond pairs repulsion remember that the repulsive force between the lone pair lone pair is greater than lone pair bond pair repulsion which in turn is greater than bond pair bond pair repulsive force so why is that because the lone pair have more space to move around so they can push each other away but in the case of bond pairs they are strongly bonded with the electrons with of other atoms right that is why they don't have much space to move around i hope the idea is clear
so what does the fourth point says it says that all the bonds in a molecule are treated as single bonds because single bonds has a electron pair right we can take carbon dioxide and hcn as an example although in carbon dioxide there is double bond present it will be taken as a single bond that is it will be counted as one electron pair or we can say one electron super pair if you want to okay same for hcn molecule after we are done with the postulates now we have to know about the steps to identify the geometry of a molecule step 1 we have to identify first the central atom step 2 we have to draw leaf structure of the molecule number 3 then count the lone pairs and bond pairs around the central atom number 4 we have to name the electron group geometry of the molecule then finally number 5 we can determine the molecular geometry or shape of a molecule now let's look at some examples first we can look at barium chloride or becl2 in becl2 the central atom is beryllium which has two valence shell electrons which it gives to two of the chlorine atoms to form ionic bond and because of this they both can attain octet here we can clearly see the central atom is surrounded by two things or we can say two molecules or two bond pairs right so to minimize the repulsion between the bond pairs they keep at an 180 degree angle thus forming a linear geometry structure okay other examples of this type we can say carbon dioxide and hcn that is hydrogen cyanide let's look at a structure where there is three bond pairs around a central atom in boron trifluoride or bf3 molecule the bond pairs arrange themselves at an 120 degree angle on a single plane thus forming a structure like this in 3d which is called the trigonal planar geometry other examples of this type includes hcho or formaldehyde in sulfur dioxide there is also three things present around the central atom sulfur so the geometry is accordingly should be like bf3 molecule but because of the fact that lone pair bond pair repulsion is greater than bond pair bond pair repulsion the two oxygen atom in sulfur dioxide are pushed a little bit closer by the lone pair present in sulfur atom that is why although the shape of the molecule is trigonal planar but it is called a bent shape molecule because of the lone pair bond pair repulsion so what happens when there is four things present around a central atom whether bond pair or lone pair let's take a look at the structure of 
methane here the central atom is surrounded by four hydrogen bond pairs thus to minimize the repulsion between them they keep at an angle of 109.5 degree in three dimensions as a result the atoms cannot remain in the same plane thus forming a geometry called tetrahedral geometry in three dimensions i hope the idea is clear now what do you think will happen when all the four things present around the central atom are not just bond pairs but lone pairs too you guessed it right they will have pen shaped structures ammonia and water both have four things present around the central atom but in the case of nh3 the angle between the atoms is 107.8 degrees whereas in h2o the angle is 104.5 degrees can you tell me why is this difference right the oxygen atom in water molecule has two lone pairs present on it but in nh3 molecule nitrogen has only one lone pair that is why the repulsion between the lone pair lone pairs in oxygen are far greater than the repulsion in the lone pair bond pair in nh3 that is why the hydrogen atoms in water molecule are pushed a little bit further than in nh3 here is how the molecule looks like in three dimensions having tetrahedral geometry but the shape of these molecules are bent shaped right i hope you all have understood all the different shapes i have told you about now let's just look at those points we have learned today first we have learned about the postulates of vscpr theory second we have learned about lone pair and bond pair electrons then we have learned about the steps to find out the geometry of any molecule then we have learned about the geometry of linear molecules trigonal planar molecules and also tetrahedral molecules so what do you go from here we have to first practice the vscpr problems then we have to identify common mistakes about these problems after that we will be able to learn about the trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral families thank you